My name is Dr. Azola, and I am a physiatrist, physical medicine and rehabilitation physician. And I have the pleasure today with uh, to share about my experience learned as I stumbled into the world of ME. Early in the pandemic, our pulmonary colleagues asked the rehabilitation division to collaborate in creating a long COVID clinic to address patients that were going to have rehabilitative needs. And I wasn't quite sure what it was going to be like, but I agreed. And I, um, I've, I've learned uh, the importance of our role in this type of clinic and in the care of patients with long COVID. And to be transparent, in our long COVID clinic, we treat patients that have lingering symptoms after acute COVID that may have been severe, that may have been an ECMO or you know, in, in ventilatory support. But we also treat patients that were infected and weathered it at home. And I started to learn about, by listening to my patients, to learn about what they were experiencing. And I knew that I didn't learn about this in medical school, and I wasn't very familiar with it, but I quickly started to, to look for areas of, of knowledge. And I knew a little bit about POTS because we have a good POTS program and autonomic dysfunction, but I have been on a quest of learning and, and understanding ME and how I can be a best help for my patients. So I just wanted to share as a perspective as a, as a physiatrist and the role that I think physiatry serves to this population of patients. So in, in physiatry, we focus on identifying health conditions and environmental factors that are resulting in an impairment of a patient. That is kind of the concept of rehabilitation medicine. So we focus our treatment and enhancing functioning and participation in life. We identify and treat health-related impairments. We assess what the limitations are and try to find environmental ways to decrease limitations to activity and enhancing the environment to allow patients to be more active and have the ability to have a fulfilling life. So that's, that's our biggest why in physiatry. And I think that this really goes along with chronic illnesses related to post-infection. So lessons that I learned listening to your patients and validating what the patient is experiencing goes a very long way. Um, and that's how I learned about ME, just l listening for an hour to what my patients were reporting to me. And I made mistakes along the way. I, we knew that exercise, and there were some protocols for exercise that were really helpful in patients with autonomic dysfunction. And we had a group of physical therapists that were highly trained in um, helping with this exercise protocols improve physiologic measures that optimize function in patients with autonomic dysfunction, in particular those with postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. But quickly we realized that exercise is not always medicine. And I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but it was, it was how we started to understand what was really happening and started to expand our knowledge on this type of illnesses. So listening to your body, it's, it's a very big key. And, and that's something that I believe in as a physiatrist, that our body is smarter than our brain. So, you know, I always encourage my patients to connect with their body, pay attention to the signals and know that that is going to be the best guidance. So that's been um, something that I've learned, helping patients come to acceptance to really understand their body signals that are sensations and how to improve their ability to do the things that they really want to do by keeping themselves within that window of energy that they can function in. So implementation of compensatory strategies and non-pharmacologic treatments are very important. And these are the basics. There are some medication and pharmacological interventions that we can utilize to improve orthostatic intolerance, to improve certain pains that people are experiencing or discomfort on either GI symptoms. So there's many things that we can symptom manage depending on what's important to the patient, neuropathies, for example, but compensatory strategies and non-pharmacological treatments are key and getting the patients to buy into that is super important.
energy conservation strategies are everything. And I concentrate on my visits with my patients on talking about pacing, planning, prioritizing and positioning and how that applies to their particular lifestyle. If they're a young mom with kids, how, what is that going to look like? If they're, you know, they have to do laundry or they're caretakers for somebody else. It's all of those things. How can we personalize those energy conservation strategies to them? And that's where our therapists have found a place as well in terms of the therapeutic approach to patients suffering from uh, lingering symptoms of COVID that manifests with post-exertional malaise. And the multidisciplinary patient care is key, being able to, to coordinate between the medical team, the multiple specialists, therapists, listening to, you know, the therapists definitely spend more time than us, like Dr. Friedman mentioned, with the patients, having meetings, multidisciplinary meetings to communicate with them, hear feedback from what their sessions and what the patients are going through is super important. And then the rehabilitation psychologist, at least in our multidisciplinary group, has been incredible. This rehabilitation psychologist specialized on helping patients deal with new impairments and the changes that that causes in life. So rehabilitation psychologists, I think, are a key component and, and even social work um, in assisting our patients obtain the benefits that they uh, so badly need. And that's all I wanted to share in terms of the physiatrist view the role of our care on patients with chronic illnesses after infections, in particular, my personal experience with low COVID.